Welcome to On The Couch, a regular catch-up where we discuss the problems and solve some of the issues facing marketing in the world today. And I'm joined by Nathan Hodges, who's the Trinity P3 Agency Roster Management Expert. Welcome, Nathan. Thank you, Darren. So, um, Nathan, agency rosters seem to be something that are quite dynamic at the moment because we see clients growing their roster and then shrinking their roster or consolidating. What do you think is driving this, uh, this dynamic? Well, it's no surprise that it's happening because channels and opportunities and technology have been growing like topsy for the last, goodness knows how long, three, four, five, six years. Of course, there are more agency offerings, more client opportunities, more client choices. Agency rosters are growing commensurately with that. Mm. So we're also seeing agencies as well offering more and more services. And so how are clients able to put the roster together when there are so many uh, agencies offering a full range of services? I think it's such a brilliant time to be in agencies because agencies really are able to make niches work and also um, make completely new uh, opportunities work. Uh, almost divorced from the traditional communications landscape, uh, much in the, the realms of tech and utility, make those work. Um, how do clients put that together? By being very, very clear about their scope of work. Uh, and that's perhaps the, the base building block for any thinking about roster model or who should be on the roster or what roles and responsibilities should be attributed across the roster. So a lot of work that you've been doing is helping uh, marketers structure that roster. We call it roster alignment. But what are the, take us through the steps that marketers should be thinking about. You've already mentioned defining their output. But what are the st- steps if you want to structure your roster? If you start with that definition of output and you look at then, with those requirements, you match those up against what is existing in terms of uh, skill set and capability in the roster and delivery level in the existing roster. Um, that exercise itself then brings, brings into focus the opportunities and the gaps uh, and, and the, uh, you know, the, the duplications that are there. That's always a good start. After that, you then need to make sure that you've got the right number of agencies for each discipline in which you're going to be spending. It's no use having uh, 10 to 15 agencies trying to extract a living and a, and a, and a kind of business model from the scope for maybe one or two agencies. That's just going to lead to fragmentation, conflict, and and poor performance. So that's where the rationalization side of it comes in. You need to be right-sized and make sure that you're asking the right agencies the right questions and not the wrong agencies the wrong questions. And when you've got this roster, you know, and and we see them quite regularly, rosters with uh, agencies that are offering largely the same services or lots of overlap, and yet marketers are constantly saying, I wish they'd all work together. Do you think it's possible to create a collaborative environment where you've got competing suppliers and agencies? I think it's much easier to create a completely uncollaborative environment. <laughs> and you do that by ignoring the whole thing, putting your head in the sand, which is what a lot of marketers do. Yeah. They tell their agencies, oh, I wish they'd all collaborate. Run along, please, and go and do it and come back when you've finished. But if the client hasn't provided any roles or responsibilities or rules or models to that, then it's never, ever going to happen. Um, So much braver are the clients who are able to recognize a common set of KPIs across the marketers that also can be applied across the agency partnerships as well, so that everybody starts working towards the same objectives. You get the remuneration right around that, and suddenly you have got a chance of getting collaboration. until then, it's a tricky road. Well, um, a lot of marketers seem to think that just by calling their roster something like the team, you know, with the blue team for Ford or the village for Optus, that uh, this should automatically mean that everyone belongs and wants to work together as one happy family. Um, what you're suggesting is we need to go beyond just giving it a name. Yeah, you can't just call it a village and expect it not to be run by an idiot. And the idiot is often the client by doing that. I mean, you can't just give it a name and expect it to work. You've got to, you've got to, there's some hard yards to be done here. And they need to be, these hard yards need to be run by the marketing teams. There's no shirking it. 
And it drives me mad when people call it something and expect it to work when you haven't actually done that work behind the scenes to make sure that people are able to work together. This sort of trend or idea about you know being more digital or technology centric mm. is getting a lot of marketers to rethink their roster. And I know you've been involved in uh, quite a lot of projects of roster realignment or rationalisation. What do you see as the prime value that you, you know, that we bring Trinity P3 brings to that process? The first would be um, the vastly increased efficiency in, in terms of the marketing team, the ability to get far, far more done uh, through the existing FTEs because you're not you're not constantly running between twelve or fifteen different agencies trying to get a single recommendation from 12 or 15 different discipline points of view. Uh, you're also not spending all of your time briefing those guys, agreeing the contract, paying all the overheads for the for the management of that and, 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 and listening to the recommendations and, and, and judging the work and so on and so forth. So that's the first thing. The side of it would be, the biggest thing would be that if you've got agency partners who are clear about where they fit in, what their role is, how they stand in terms of contributing to the business yeah. and moving it forward, then it's an open slather for them to start to invest in terms of resource and skill set and technical capability and suddenly you've got partnership again as opposed to just a series of dogfights around your roster and trying everybody trying to get budget and a slice of the action. Because we've seen some uh, rosters that are incredibly large and you wonder you know, I often wonder how this happens. I can't imagine any marketer sets out to create a, a ridiculously large roster of agencies. What do you think it is that's, that allows people to get themselves into this situation? Well, the funny thing is marketers often don't know how big their roster is. Look, it's very easy for it to happen. If you're decentralised as a marketing department, which a lot are, or if you've got slightly loose governance in terms of who can hire which agencies or put which agencies on a panel, um, then you can find agencies, will agency relationships just grow like topsy and there's no rhyme or reason to that. Um, you know, people love to have agencies that are and, and new business directors in agencies are very good at this too. Oh, no, I used to be one. Um, you know, you'd always, you'd always be kind of trying to fish around to see if you can get into that particular portfolio, into that particular relationship. And the, while the, entrepreneurial, in, it, the entrepreneurialism of that is clearly to be applauded, um, there's a responsibility on the marketer's side as well to make sure that that actually is contributing to the business success and not just feeding off its, its products and its revenue. Mm. So, anyway, it happens. It's human nature. There's always something going on. Now, Trinity P3, we're a management consultancy, but a lot of people oh. mistake us for an agency. Yeah, so I, I often, I often that wonder, that um, is there a place on a roster for a company like Trinity P3? I'd say I wouldn't like us on a roster for a second. It would make us have to start behaving like an agency, and, and you know we're we're here to be icebreakers between agency and clients and marketers and their organisations and businesses and, and their rosters. So, so no, um, there are there, obviously there are you know there are roles where we can rock up regularly and contribute. And I think about collaboration tools that we've got or, or scope of work assessments or production assessments. There are many places where and we do tend to get up, run up regularly by clients uh, to solve problems that crop on up an regular basis. Well, sometimes on an annual basis, but I'd hate to think of it as that regular. Because um, I think it starts to pollute our ability to be objective and not to be afraid to be unpopular. Mm. And um, I'm not aware that we're too afraid of being unpopular so far, no. Um, but I think that's an important thing to have. You've got to have that ability to be able to say it as you see it, deliver the truth, even if that's going to be an uncomfortable thing. Well, if that's uncomfortable, it means you've got too much riding on the client liking you at the mm. end of it. And you know, while we don't go out of our way to be disliked, it's important to tell the truth. And I think well, if, you're, if you're independent, you can tell the truth. So that's how you're effective, is by actually being objective and being able to say what needs to be said so that the parties involved can move on from that. Yeah. But, you know... To actually be involved, my medical background says, you know, there's therapy and diagnosis. Um, I think we need to play an equal part in that. Do you, do you see that as a model that works quite well? I quite like that, yeah. Uh, but, you know, to extend that metaphor almost a breaking point, uh, or that analogy, 
um, or anagram or simile, whatever it is. It's, a, it's an analogy. An analogy. Uh, yeah, thank you. To, break the, to, to extend that to breaking point, what you don't want is your doctor coming in every three or four days and going, right, any diseases I can clear up here because I've had a right. whole bunch of drugs. You, right. don't, you don't want that. So um, having, having worked a long time in agencies and being, having been asked by lots of management teams to go and do or say things that I'm not necessarily think of in the best interests of that client, um, I rejoice in the fact that for the last many years we've been able to be fiercely independent so and because we see you to be so. Thank God, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks for joining me on the couch. It's been an absolute pleasure, Dale. Thank you. And uh, subscribe to the Trinity P3 YouTube channel for, uh, and join us on the couch next time. Thanks very much. Bye.